Bright Garlic, and welcome to ET and I Shortcuts number 10, The Jellyfish UFO. So today I'll be talking about the supposed jellyfish UFO video published by Jeremy Corbell. Now, in order to understand what you're seeing in the video, I want you to step back and imagine a grand narrative arc that spans a hundred years or more. The stretch of that arc includes things like the planting of false narratives and false ideas, half-truths, the setting up of stooges, and the playing of individuals, some of whom may know they're being played, and some of whom don't know they're being played in a disinformation project that is orientated to create an image of ETs as hostile invaders that pose a threat to humanity and life on Earth. Now, running parallel to such a project are things like other projects that create strange lights in the sky, hostile ETs among unthreatening humans, and strange ET craft that are acting in potentially threatening ways. Now, given what I've just said, here's why the video and the jellyfish UFO in it are not alien. Aliens can know whatever they want without needing to do reconnaissance and what is known by one group of aliens will be shared with others. And if they were doing any kind of surveillance, they would use things that are so small we would have no way of detecting them. The other thing that struck me about the video is that this supposed uh, jellyfish UFO gives off a heat signature, and the fact that it can only be seen in infrared now, ET craft can emit light, as you know, but they don't necessarily emit heat. Light without heat. So, you have to look at the really basic things in this video and try to discern what's human and what's ET. So, in terms of this jellyfish UFO, the script plays out perfectly into the threat narrative. An apparent UFO doing surveillance at an isolated military base, an American military base in Iraq in 2018, being able to block tracking, then disappearing into the ocean for 17 minutes before re-emerging and zipping off. That is the perfect script for suggesting a threat narrative. The other thing that's worth noting about this particular craft, if we'll call it that, is it's very similar to the carrot drones that some of you might recall. And those carrot drones were capable of moving silently. They also had these long kind of dangling parts and they were capable of moving at high speed. And they were also capable of disappearing and reappearing. If you watch uh, certain episodes of Star Wars, and there are other movies like this, but Star Wars is the one that pops out in my mind, there are some scenes of drones moving in those films that are very, very similar to what we're seeing with the jellyfish UFO. And they reinforce this whole idea of alien surveillance. The other thing I think is worth noting here is that and I mean no disrespect, but this video was given to what to me is a vulnerable journalist, Jeremy Corbell. And it sounds very, very similar to another vulnerable journalist, George Knapp. Now, Jeremy is the co-host of the Weaponized podcast with George Knapp. And George Knapp met John Lear was introduced to John Lear, and his story of the apparent alien and U.S. government uh, agreement and exchange program where they were allowed to abduct human beings in exchange for technology. 
and apparently the aliens then lied and deceived us. So George Knapp fell for that covert disinformation and reorientated himself in line with that. Now, he probably never knew about it, but he was being played. And I would suggest that Jeremy Corbell, and certainly with his association with George Knapp, is also being played. The other element of this I think worth uh, taking note of is that this has been taken to another level. The military personnel on that base were also debriefed apparently so that it could be discerned what it was that they saw and you might say that they were interrogated. I'm assuming they were interrogated. But the thing worth noting here is they went through a process so the existence of that process reinforces the narrative that this must be real, that this really was something they wanted to control. Now, of course, we don't know what conclusions were reached on the military base, but I think it feeds the speculation that this is alien and this feeds the whole threat narrative around ETs. So go back to my grand narrative arc and see the context, see how this fits in. And if you start paying careful attention, you'll see that there are other aspects of that arc, other projects playing out around the world, things like strange, potentially hostile aliens appearing in South America and so on. So don't be fooled. This is not alien. This is man-made, something from a covert project, and it's there playing a role in creating disinformation and creating and reinforcing the threat narrative. Thanks very much. I'm Bright Garlic. Have a wonderful day of human life. Bye for now.